Good morning. Welcome to Ogden Presbyterian Church on this winter day. I won't say a good day, I'll say winter day. Uh, sure. Uh, if you're a visitor to the uh, church, we'd ask you if you could sign the uh, visitor book in the entry to the church, or if you could fill out a pew envelope uh, with your name and address, uh, we would love to get in contact with you. Uh, today is the first Sunday of Lent. Within this season, we will be drawing close to God. We will magnify the Lord by being intentional in our actions. We will journey together to the cross, turning our eyes to Jesus. Oh, by the way, I'm Dennis Dupree, in case you don't know me. Call to worship, artist and creator of our souls. You sculpted us and all within this world. Help us as we take up your invitation to prayer and simplicity. May these 40 days of Lent sharpen our hunger for the feast of your holy friendship. And we wet our thirst for the living water you offer through Jesus Christ. Please join in singing hymn 2074, shout to the Lord.
God, we love you. We are thankful for you and your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to see your face. Help us to worship you, praise you, and open our hearts and lives to your will. We will now sing hymn 2164, Sanctuary. Be seated. The prayer of confession. This is a time we draw close to you and humble ourselves. To be close with someone, you must be honest and authentic. This is the time to be honest and authentic with God. In silent prayer, talk to God now, confess what you must and realign your heart. God, we call out to you, asking to be more like you. You may remain seated as we sing this song. 2167, More Like You.
the assurance of forgiveness. Friends, hear this good news. The Lord of God is beyond measure and you are included in, this, in that love. Know that you are forgiven and thus freed to love and serve. Let us sing together of God's love. No, two, tw yeah. 2159, Jesus, draw me close. Our scripture reading for today is from Mark 1, verses 9 through 15, from the New Living Translation. One day Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. As Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly beloved son, and you bring me great joy. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness, where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. He was out among the wild animals, and angels took care of him. Later on, after John was arrested, Jesus went into Galilee, where he preached God's good news. The time promised by God has come at last, he announced. The kingdom of God is near. Repent your sins and believe the good news. The word of God for the people of God. And by faith we can see it afar For the Father ways over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall be on that beautiful Beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to wonderful father above we shall offer a tribute of praise for the glorious give of his love 
and the blessing that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet We shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, friends, it is a joy to be with you all today. Um, I would like all of our young disciples to come on down. Come hang out right here on the stairs. Come on up. Yeah. yeah. Hi. How are you? It's good to see you. Look at this big walker. Love it, love it. <clears throat> so, my friends, we just read a scripture reading about Jesus, and in this scripture passage, Jesus was baptized in the water, and after he was baptized, he was then sent out into the wilderness, and he was sent out to the wilderness to fast, and he did this for 40 days, and fasting means he gave up food. He didn't eat food during that time. But during that time, he turned to God. So what I have here for us, have you ever played the game Keepy Uppy? Yeah, I don't, you know that game Keepy Uppy? Yeah, um, it's a balloon and you can't let it touch the floor, right? Keepy Uppy, right? This is a play game we play all the time in our house. So here I have this red balloon. Can I have two volunteers? Yeah, I would love you to, come on up. Come on up, McKenna, you can stand right here next to him. Okay, so the two of you are gonna stand here and we're gonna pretend that this red balloon represents everything that you have on your plate, okay? So this is the chores you have to do. This is the um, help that you need to give to mom and dad. This is the schoolwork. This is uh, the pets you have to take care of. It's a lot to manage some days, right? Hold on. So what I want you guys to do is to work together and you're gonna play the Uppy. You ready? Here we go, I'll start it. Good, good, Ooh. Don't let it touch the floor, don't let it touch the floor. Ah, it touches the floor. Okay, let's try it one more time, okay? See, this is nice because you guys have the support of each other. Give it a try, go, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't let it fall, don't let it fall. Good, 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 phew, phew, phew. All right, excellent work, excellent work. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to it for right now. So this is like life. When we have a lot of things going around within our life, it is hard to keep it all up. And what we learn from the scripture reading today is how Jesus in the desert turned to scripture and he turned to God. And God helped him to do the things. All right. Um, let's see here. Miss McKinley, I want you to, we're going to do this again. But this time, stand up right here again for me. Come on down. Come on down, come on down. All right, are you ready? This time we're gonna say, God, we need your help, okay? We, we're gonna give it up to God and we're gonna say, God, we need your help. Can you help us do all the things, okay? Hold this with two hands, okay? And you're gonna toss this over here to play Kate be Uppy. One, two, three, go. Woo, woo, woo. Oh. Okay, whoa. We prayed for God to help us. <laughs> you know, you want to play with the other balloon. <laughs> so this is an example of how when we pray to God, God can help us with all of the things that are... <sighs> yeah, I know, it's so fun. This one's not going to float like that one. <laughs> but this is an example of how God can help us with all of those things that are hard to do on our own. <laughs> All right, friends, can we say a prayer? Okay. Ready? Dear God, 
Thank you for your help. Help us to pray and to give all things to you. Amen. Beautiful. See, we give it up to God. Woo. It's going to hang out there for a week. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Until we're back from Florida. All righty. It will come down in time. Thank you, friends, for coming forward. I believe we have, who's on Sunday school today? You're okay. Are you good? Are you able to walk folks back? All right. We are going to follow Miss Azalina right on out. I'm going to hold this one. It's going to stay with me. Thank you. Thank you, friends. You can head right on out. <clears throat> line up, head out, line up, head out. Yeah, are you going? You got it, that way, that way. Are you coming? You can hang out with Mama? Okay, you can go sit with Mama. She's over here. <laughs> I mean, you could say up here, it wouldn't be any different than most days, right, for me. Uh, friends, it is a joy to be with you today, um, and um, let's let's dive right in. You can, Athena, you can totally just leave that stuff, and yeah, yep, we'll get it later. You can go be my helper in the Sunday school room. Thank you. She's up the stairs this way. Yeah, you walk around. Thanks, love. Okay. All right, so preparations. Today's scripture reading, we talked about Jesus is baptized, and this is kind of like a marker of the beginning of his ministry. It is a preparation in itself. You know, it's like when we um, did our ordination and installation not too long ago, we stopped and we remembered our baptism. And by remembering that baptism, we are uh, reminding ourselves how we are claimed by God and a part of God's holy family. And uh, in our scripture reading, it goes on to Jesus going out into the wilderness. And preparations for all big events take different forms, right? There are some of us who are last minute, we'll, we'll just go with the flow and we'll figure it out as, as we are there. Um, and then we have our researchers and Excel sheet users uh, and everyone in between, right? So today's passage identifies a time of preparation for Jesus in the wilderness. Now, this is Mark's version of this story. And in Mark's version, um, it is very short and concise. It leaves out some of the other details that you will find in the other Gospels. The language used adds a bit of urgency. And it kind of leaves you with this sense that like, whoa, something is about to change. So for starters, the baptism isn't just a simple baptism, but the words used, and we focused on the scripture during our session meeting this month, and I had folks, uh, I read the scripture and I had folks highlight what words stood out to you. And many of our elders uh, noted the word torn or split. Right, that that's a that's a strange and big word. What is that to be torn? This image of something being torn, of heaven being ripped apart, it is raw, and it is abrupt, and it's even hard to imagine what exactly that would look like. But it is symbolizing this: the, the heaven that is separate from us was being, the doors were being flown open so that God could speak to Jesus. That there wasn't that separation. You know, it, um, as I was reflecting on the scripture and, and praying with it, I was reminded of uh, an image of a memory of the birth of my nephew. Um, my nephew is now 12, so this was a number of years ago, but uh, my sister was in labor. Many of us gathered at Highland Hospital and waited in the lobby. We were that family. <laughs> we staked out and waited for the announcement. And we gathered there outside of the nurse's station. And I have this vivid image of my brother-in-law ripping through those doors 
<laughs> with joy and energy and tears in his eyes, it's a boy. <laughs> and we all erupt in applause and cheers. When I think of that moment in my life, I then come back to the scripture and I wonder, I wonder if that ripping and that tearing was God busting through those doors to say, that is my son who I am well pleased. I love him. It is a dramatic image of deep connection. It's a sacred tearing or a sacred ripping. That voice is heard. So the scripture quickly transitions to a next segment where Jesus is, uh, Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. Now the word used in this reading is that Jesus was compelled. Okay, so this is again another urgent word. Compelled is, it's a strong word. It's not a suggestion or a kind plea to go, but this is an order. Go to the wilderness now. And this 40 days of fasting and prayer is preparation. And this is where our 40 days of Lent comes from, the season that we are in right now, this preparation for Easter. <clears throat> it is a time where Jesus fasts and recites scripture and prays, talking to God. And it is a time where Jesus gives it all up to God. And it is these things that help us to make ourselves be strong, excuse me, strong disciples. It's digging in and giving up things that distract us. It is digging in and learning the scriptures more. It is digging in and having regular praying, right? right? Praying without ceasing. It is to know God more. We must remember that Christ did not enter the wilderness just to be hungry and tired, but Christ was preparing the way. What does that mean? To prepare the way. To prepare the way for the kingdom of God. I think it means to get ready to meet God. It means to get yourself together. <laughs> you know, on Ash Wednesday, um, which was just this week, we had two really beautiful services. And in those services, we were, are reminded that all things in this life are temporary, that things do come to an end. And we give that sacred uh, prayer over each other as we place ashes on foreheads, reminding us that we are dust and to dust we shall return. To turn from your old life and turn to the life that Jesus has called you. This is a part of that. It is preparing for the way of the kingdom of God. It's turning away from the old and turning to what God is calling you to do now. And it's not just a one-time call and you're done, friends. God is calling each and every one of us day and day and day after day to serve and love and to be his hands and feet in this community. Friends, God is calling. Our last section of the scripture, it kind of nicely broke down into three parts, is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And he goes out and he proclaims just that, right? That God's, he says this, the time promised by God has come at last. The kingdom of God is near. Repent of your sins and believe the good news. Friends, what's the good news? What comes to mind? Shout it out. God came to forgive us of sin. Yes. Anything else? You're right. The good news 
is that we have the Son, Jesus Christ. The good news is that healing can happen. The good news is that forgiveness from God is possible. The good news is that we have God's love and mercy and grace that is abundant. Hallelujah. Now, believing that good news doesn't stand alone. Right? That phrase that we hear in scripture again and again uh, starts with repent. So we can't forget that part, repent. So repenting means to turn away from or to give up or stop doing. So friends, in this moment, we need to give it all up to God. <laughs> We need to give up the anger. We need to give up the jealousy. We need to give up the irritation and turn to God. We need to give up that hate and that distrust and be love in this world. We need to give up the things that cause us to sin, the things that cause hurt and divide. This Lent I am saying, I give up. And I give it up to the Lord. I turn to you, Jesus. And I invite you to do that same thing with me this Lent. In everything you do, may you give it up to the Lord. Keeping your heart and your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. Friends, let's pray together. Holy One, we know that Jesus went into the wilderness and fasted. He was hungry and yet he stayed focused on you. He was tempted and in response to those temptations, he recited scripture. He rebuked Satan, God, help us to give it all up to you. Help us to be brave enough and open our hearts to give up all that we do to you. To not hide anything, but to be transformed. Lord, we turn to you now, examine our hearts. Open our eyes to what we need to see. Lord, you are calling us. You are calling us to to repent to turn from the old and turn to the life that you have called us. Help us to believe and carry this news of good news, your good news, that we have the love of Jesus Christ, that we are forgiven, that healing is possible, that the joy of the Lord is abundant. Lord, help us to give it all up to you so that we can carry Carry that joy and that love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, I am excited uh, to bring Lucia up here this morning. We have a new mission opportunity. um, And I think this is Well, I'm really excited for it. So I'm going to let Lucia um, take the microphone and share what what she's been up to. (laughs) Before I do that, I do want to read a note from the Spencerport Ecumenical Food Shelf. It says, the Spencerport Food Shelf would like to sincerely thank you for your recent food donation. Your donation will help many families in our area both they and we are grateful for your kind generosity. Thank you. It's last Monday, Harry and Jim Case delivered 168 cans of soup (laughs) to the food show and 43 boxes of crackers. (laughs) So (laughs) I think that's amazing. Thank you so much for your generosity. I'm up here on behalf of the mission committee, which is Kathy Case, Sharon Pittman, Barbara Pratt, Barbara, it's nice to see you here today. Carolyn, Nicole, and um, Denise Webster. We have, I, I think a lot of you know, we have had for the past year a partnership with the Munn School. You know that Don Hoadley teaches there, Sharon and Harry's daughter teaches there, and Kelly 
volunteers there. And about a year ago, Don told us about the need at Mun for clothing and food. And we did um, provide for them, Sharon kindly delivered underwear, brand new underwear, and a lot of clothes from the clothes closet that Sharon took home and washed and delivered. And they were very grateful for that at the Mun School. But they also need food, and that's why I'm here today. Um, we've learned from Jesse that the Gates Presbyterian Church has a food ministry, a weekend food ministry. And they provide food for children in two different schools in the Gates Chilai District um, on weekends. I don't know if you know this about Mun. Mun is right in our Spencerport School District. And Mun has a 54% um, economically disadvantaged population, 54%. They have 324 students, so that means 174 of them are at or below the poverty level. It's just, that was unbelievable to me, right in our own district. So <laughs> we would like to, I'll tell you a little bit about the Gates program. We did, Whitney and Kathy Case and I went to visit it, and they deliver food every Friday afternoon to about 50 some children. It, which they distribute to two different schools. And in those bags that they deliver are enough food for two breakfasts and two lunches per child. So if we wanted to do something like that in Ogden, um, I, I think we would probably do something similar if we could to provide bags with two breakfasts and two lunches for the weekend. Um, Whitney and I went with Don to talk with the principal at um, Munn School. And Don had kindly pre prepared him for this visit. So he was ready for us. And he had talked with the superintendent of schools too. And he was so enthusiastic about it. Um, we just felt like this was something that we could do. So we talked about piloting a program like that beginning at the end of uh, spring break, April 12th, and taking it to the end of June, which would be about 10 weeks, and providing bags of food. And we thought we'd start with 20 children. The principal was a little disappointed in that, I think, because he said, I don't know how we're going to choose 20 from 174 children. Um, the school is going to recommend the children and get in touch with the families to see if they'd be interested. Um, I, I wish we could do more. <laughs> And I'm thinking that at the end of the pilot time, um, we will assess this and maybe in the fall we can do more. We figured that the bags that Gates distributes cost about, of the food in the bags cost about six to $7 a bag. So if you figure $7 times 20 bags, that would be $140 a week. For 10 weeks, that's $1,400. Um, Gates has offered us $500 as a startup, which I think is amazing. They have a grant from Presbytery, and they're willing to share that much with us. And if this works for us, we might consider applying for a grant to, for the fall. So this is where we need your help. <laughs> we need help with the food and or money donate, uh, donations of money toward the food. Al made this suggestion, oh, thank you for bringing him up here, um, that we show you what's in these bags of food. So I asked Gates if they would loan us some food, and they very <laughs> graciously delivered it to my house. So one of these bags is a little bit larger because they put more food in it when it, there's a vacation week, like the week coming up. But it has things like oatmeal and boxes of cereal and granola bars and crackers and packets of tuna fish and peanut butter and Chef Boyardee <laughs> pudding, <laughs> all kinds of things. I, I'll put these out on the fellowship table yeah. so that you can see what they look like. And that's the size bag that they put the food in. So if you can imagine an elementary school size kittle, this bag would be f placed in their backpack on Friday by school staff. So um, it would be confidential and they would go home with breakfast and lunch for the weekend. 
So it's small, but it's enough for a little person and uh, not too heavy that they can't get the backpack to the school bus. <laughs> yeah. We were concerned about privacy and the school would distribute the bags discreetly to the children. But when I asked that question, they said, the kids are so excited about getting the food that they don't keep it that quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's up to them. So do you have questions for us? We'll be out in the fellowship hall if you do want to ask some questions later and we'll put the food out there and the bag out there. And Whitney also has this, this is a sheet that has the different kinds of food that you can purchase to fill the bags. And also they buy a lot in bulk. They buy it from Walmart and BJ's and Costco. So it doesn't cost so much. So we're asking for your help with food or with donations. We'll have a tote in the fellowship hall for you to put things in between now and April 12th when we'll pack the bags. And at that time, we'll need some help packing bags. And also um, probably prepping, getting ready, putting the foods on shelves and getting ready for the 12th of April. I'm ecstatic about this. I think this is a great opportunity for us to try it. It's a pilot, right? So it's a short time commitment. We're gonna live into it a little bit, work out the kinks and prayerfully stay open to how the spirit is directing us, right? So if we feel led to continue, we can. If we feel like God is leading us somewhere differently, we'll listen to that. But I want us to prayerfully step forward and to try this together. So please uh, share your donations, food or monetary to help us get kicked off here. Yeah. And let us know if you're willing to help in some other ways. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dawn. Yeah. Thank you for letting us know about the need. Do you have anything else that you'd like no, to say? I just want to say thank you yeah. for coming out. I mean, I have a little five-year-old that after literally last year, no food in their home. None. They went to the neighbors and just started that. So thank you. We want our babies everywhere to have food. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's near and dear to the heart. <clears throat> okay, so I believe uh, we have a short video of our Lenten series. Is that correct? Awesome. So this will be on Thursdays. Details are in your bulletin. Um, there's a sign up sheet in the fellowship hall, and this will give us a little sneak preview of what to expect. So I encourage you to consider joining to study during this Lent. Welcome to the latest study in the That the World May Know film series with Ray Vanderlaan, A Clash of Kingdoms, Paul proclaims Jesus as Lord, part one. In this series, follow along the Apostle Paul's second teaching tour throughout modern day Greece. Come with us to Philippi and discover what it means to be a colony of heaven. Visit the city of Thessaloniki and find out what happens when the authority of Caesar clashes with the authority of Jesus. I want to invite you to join us. Discover unlikely people <laughs> I was a part of a pastor uh, group this week and they used buffering as an actual prayer practice. And it was this practice of um, you share, and then we all need to buffer. Take 30 seconds of silence, just, just let it all process. <laughs> Thank you. One more book available. You can also purchase it online.
well. We might need to just take, take our word for it. It's good. It's interesting. Come join us. It'll be a great time. Uh, and we can we can attempt to share that on a different a different time. Oh, I love it. Ah, friends, it is time to share our joys and concerns and announcements. What do we have today? Harry, come on. <clears throat> come on here. Yes, and on Zoom. Any prayer requests on Zoom? Uh, Pastor Whitney, can you yes. hear me? Yes, I can. This is Diane Voorhees, and I'd like to offer a prayer of thanks. Someone went ahead, and with the snow that we had here, went ahead and shoveled or snow plowed half my driveway so that I wasn't stuck in here and didn't have to shovel it by hand. And it just meant so much to me. I have no idea who did it, but I'm extremely thankful and would like to offer a prayer of thanks and that God blesses them. Absolutely. Thanks be to God for helping hands everywhere. Thank you for sharing that. Pastor Whitney? Uh, one here, turn your mic on. It's uh, one moment on Zoom. <laughs> it's both Diana and Voorhees and Sharon's birthday today. Ah, Diane and Sharon, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Whitney. Yes, Rita K. Hill here. I'm wondering if they had Bible study if they're going to put it on Zoom where I can listen in on my flip phone? Yes, yes, great question. We will have Zoom set up for anyone to dial in or video in for that time. Thank you, Rita. Great question. But I don't, ha I don't have any numbers to, di to dial, so do I just dial the, the number that I would dial in to come on church? Yeah, great question. The link will be found in your email. The same I don't have email. Sorry, Rita. Pastor, I don't have number. Thank you. Rita, it's going to be the same number that you called today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 We'll tell her later. Thank you. Yeah. I'd like to ask for ongoing prayers for Nellie Manning and her family, and also for my sister-in-law, uh, Lynn Gruber, who was uh, totaled her car and was uh, kind of got a few broken bones in her face. And so, oh, but, no. Oh, just for oh. you. Yeah, yeah Lord, uh, provide healing and comfort. We lift them up to you. Here, I got you, Bonnie. <laughs> Of course. Just uh, 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 pr prayers to a uh, safe trip to Girl Scout uh, friends that are going to New Zealand for three weeks. Woohoo! What an adventure. Lord, we ask for traveling mercies and fun and adventures uh, for Bonnie's dear friends. And prayers for you and Adam and Kenley. <laughs> And Ethan, have yes. a wonderful time. Yes, thank you. Uh, so my family, we are taking a vacation. Uh, we are flying out tomorrow and we'll be back on the following Wednesday. Um, I will be praying for you. I will be reading scripture. I will be talking to God. I will not be reading my email. <laughs> if you have any needs, um, our deacons have been uh, are fantastic and are well equipped. So if something comes up during this time, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to your deacon and they can arrange whatever support you may need. We do have emergency pastoral care coverage by Reverend Brandy Wooten of Chile Presbyterian, who has agreed to provide coverage during this time. If a need were to arise, your deacon knows how to get in contact with her if needed. All right. 
Um, let's pray. Holy One, I thank you for this group of people. I thank you for the disciples that gather here today. Lord, you see and know our hearts. Lord, we give up the things that worry us. We give our worries to you. Lord, we give up the questions that we have in our heart to you, trusting that you will guide us in finding answers. Holy One, we lift up those needing healing. We lift up those facing violence. We lift up those facing food insecurity. Lord, we lift up this new ministry project with Mun School for Weekend Food. Lord, guide our steps. Help us to be a light in this very community. Holy One, I lift up those who need healing. Jesus, heal. For those facing addiction and mental health issues, Lord, provide relief. You are the almighty counselor. Holy One, there is so much in this world. And so we draw close to you. Lead us, teach us, and guide us. And let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is time for us to give our offering to the Lord. God who gives abundantly and freely, we turn to you. Holy One, we give this to you. Lord, have your way. Amen. We're going to join together in singing hymn 85. What wondrous love is this? We're going to sing verses 1 and 2.
Friends, Jesus did not just go into the wilderness to become hungry and tired. He went to prepare the way for the kingdom of God. So let's do just that this Lent. Let's prepare our hearts for God's kingdom. May we boldly turn from the ways of this world and turn to the life that God is calling us to live. May you go forth full of love and grace and forgiveness. May you go forth with the light of Christ. May the Holy Spirit bless you with words to speak of his goodness. Go out into the mission field and build disciples. God's peace and love and mercy is with you. Amen.